Investcorp launches a blockchain fund from Abu Dhabi, and Binance gets approval from ADGM to operate as a broker-dealer in virtual assets. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Ramia Farah. Investcorp is launching the eLydian Lion, the first dedicated institutional blockchain fund based in the GCC with a global investment mandate. The fund will be led from Investcorp's Abu Dhabi office. It will be deployed globally and will focus on investments in companies leading the next digital evolution driven by blockchain tech. The fund will mainly invest in early stage companies operating in areas within the blockchain ecosystem like blockchain infrastructure, platforms and exchanges, decentralized finance and data analytics. Binance has received in-principle approval for financial services permission from Abu Dhabi Global Market to operate as a broker-dealer in virtual assets. Binance is the world's largest crypto exchange by volume. Binance is also looking into closely engaging with other key Abu Dhabi stakeholders to broaden the deployment of its offering across the MENA region and beyond. Its founder and CEO Chen Peng Zhao says Dubai will be his base for the foreseeable future. Kuwait has raised the official selling prices for two crude grades it sells to Asia to record levels. Kuwait has set the May Kuwait export crude price at $9.30 a barrel above the average Oman Dubai quotes. That's up $4.50 from the previous month. It also raised May Kuwait super light crude to $9.65 a barrel above Oman Dubai quotes. That is up $3.70. Egypt's annual inflation rate spiked in March to 12.1 percent, partially due to commodity shortages caused by the Ukraine war. The inflation figure is up from the 10 percent registered in February. The price increase has sent inflation above the central bank's 5 to 9 percent target and its 9.25 percent overnight lending rate. Some analysts forecast that inflation will peak by August this year, after which it will start to normalize. They say fuel prices are expected to be raised by the government this month and consequently, inflation should peak in April to between 12.5 and 13 percent. The Arab Monetary Fund approved five new loans worth $623 million to North African countries in 2021. The AMF's 2021 annual report published over the weekend shows new loans for Morocco, Egypt and Tunisia. The funds were meant to meet emergency funding needs and support reform efforts in the face of economic uncertainties and recovery from the pandemic. Let's take a look now at today's Forbes Real-Time Billionaires Ranking. It tracks the daily ups and downs of the world's richest people. Today we focus on Eastern markets as much of the West is still closed. Our biggest winner today is Gautam Adani up $4.9 billion with net wealth of $117.8 billion. Our second biggest winner today is vaccine module Jiang Ren Sheng and family up $1.2 billion with net wealth of $20 billion. And our third place winner is courier module Wang Wei up $577 million with net wealth of $22.4 billion. Check out our website and our social media for all of the latest billionaires news. China's measures to combat COVID-19 hurt output at its electric vehicle factories in March, with Tesla's Shanghai operation making barely more cars than in the traditionally low production month of February. While Tesla's Shanghai factory delivered 16% more cars in March versus the previous month, its production of 55,462 units was only 154 higher than in February. It's a shorter month during which workers usually get some time off for the lunar New Year holiday. Elon Musk is no longer joining the board of Twitter in a reversal less than a week after announcing the Tesla chief would be appointed. Twitter CEO Parag Agarwal tweeted, Elon has decided not to join our board and he said he believes it's for the best. Musk was named to join the Twitter board after buying a major stake in the firm and becoming its largest shareholder. Meanwhile, Musk is taking to Twitter, proposing converting Twitter's San Francisco headquarters into a homeless shelter, since few people are actually working there during the pandemic. Amazon's Jeff Bezos is supporting the idea as Amazon has an eight-floor homeless shelter attached to its Seattle headquarters. Bezos suggested converting at least a portion of Twitter's headquarters, if not all of it, into a homeless shelter. Musk agreed in another tweet, calling it a great idea. I'm Ramia Faraj. This is The Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.